Oh, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> so you're both uh, starring in a beautiful thing this week. Yes, we are. In which you have to play lovers. How did you approach that subject with each other? Yeah, literally, we went to the first read through, and Ed was like, "What do I have to do?" And I didn't actually know, so I was like, "We apparently have to kiss." And that's about all I know. I have to rub oil in your back. That's about it. My friend Alex explained it to me, so it was a really intimate scene, and like, but in the play, it's not. It, it's it's a lot more sort of awkward in it because obviously these two lads are fifteen. They Jamie sort of knows he's gay, and, and but Steve doesn't. Steve knows he's gay. He just he really he's he really repressed. Scared, is yeah, it? He's really yeah, scared yeah, yeah. of showing it, and he he doesn't want to like come out. Obviously. Yeah. So the whole the whole sort of scene where he's rubbing the oil in the back, uh, it's it's a lot more sort of <laughs> withdrawn from the outset. Mike Evil's that the the bedroom scene mm. where I have to rub oil in his back and then I have to kiss him. And and the thing is for me like. I'd, we, me and Ed hadn't discussed whether oh, are we going to do the kiss now or are we just not going to do it. Uh, so I just went with it and just got up and kissed Ed and Ed again just went with it. Well, yeah, for me, I think the the fear of playing the gay role came from not the fact that I didn't have the, the sort of the self belief that I could do it. I think it was the I didn't want a, a sort of backlash from yeah. other people. Being a straight guy playing a gay rap character. I didn't want to offend anybody. I know you're the same, mm. but we didn't. We didn't want to become that stereotype, and we didn't want to fall into that sort of easy loop that it is to fall into of that. Right, I'm going to be the really over the top stereotypical character, and 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 I don't for one minute think Mike would have ever let us slip into that. No, um, not. and I've said this so many times. It's nice to have had Mike there, who has literally been through the whole experience and. The story is so close to his heart that that any time we were feeling sort of unsure about anything, how yeah, yeah. even down to the sort of little details of would I put my hand on his leg here or or would would I put my head on his shoulder or or like just true like emotion like how how how, how, how am I feeling, feeling in this in this moment? It, it's it's been nice to have someone there that's not just a director telling you where to stand and what to do. It, to also have someone there as a mentor that that coaches you through that experience. And I don't come at it from a, oh, how sad is it for me that I'm having to go through this experience? And and being able to relate to it in that way, I, I'm coming at it from, from how, how awful it is for mm. other people to have to go through this sort of, what can be such a traumatic experience. And even watching Mike as a director, when we're playing those scenes, like how, how much it, it sort oh, of gets to him to see that sort of pain and emotion from somebody, it's... It's sad, but also completely eye-opening. Hi. Hi. We're on our way to see Jake in another bloody show. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to watch Jake and Ed in um, Beautiful Thing. Yeah, which is a play. It's a play. No singing. No singing. What am I going to do with myself? <laughs> it's a small theatre. It's like a hundred seat theatre. Yeah, it's actually intimate, I think. In Manchester. Um, Ashton Underline. So, this is the theatre. It's very simple, very plain. Look at Ed on the bed, eating a chicken wrap. We're going to check back in, probably yeah. in the interval. We're going to speak to Michael Jones McCaw, who is legendary and is the director. Yeah. Um, and hopefully get some of him on here and his vision of the show. Right, we got to go quick. It's the interval. Um, we're in a rush. we got to get changed. It's going really well so far. Let me see. See you. Bye. Yeah. It's the interval. Yeah. So cute! We're a little bit emotional, we don't really know what to do with ourselves. I never know what to do with myself. <laughs> so I'm sure I <laughs> It's so good. It's so good, like we've been like... We just have no words. <laughs> so... Ed, what is the biggest Thing you've learned throughout this process going to different directors and getting that whole like full experience of a new director and how he thinks you should play stuff and also having that past emotion it was really really nice to learn how he would he portrays his show hi so we're Hello. here with michael jones mccord the one and only <laughs> um, 
and he is the director of the Be uh, Beautiful Thing that we've just watched. And we wanted to just ask a few questions, if you don't mind. Not at all. So, firstly, what made you choose this play? Um, so, the, this play almost happened by accident. So, the um, residents of Guidebridge Theatre approached me to come and direct for them at Guidebridge. So, she said to me one day, Come and direct for us, but choose your own thing. And this has always been a play that, I, that has stuck in my mind, but I thought I really want to do it because it's, it's so relatable to me, to my life. Um, but also there's there's some really, really key messages in it for so many other people out there. It's, it's beautifully written. One of the things we said, which is a testament to the acting and the direction, is that it didn't feel like it was Jake and Earth. No, the, the, the boys have, have done so well. And I'll be really honest, I was really worried about casting two straight guys and two uber straight guys who were into football, who were into rugby. Yeah, they love musical theatre, but yeah. but the guys yeah. and I was I was really in my mind the back thinking I don't know if it's gonna work. When I got them down to audition, I threw them straight into the bedroom scene, and they were like, and I was like, I just need to see if you can do it. Um, and we workshopped it, and we did it a couple of times, and and we gradually got closer, and they just they trusted me, and that's what exactly exactly what I needed them to do. They needed to trust me that I'd been through it as a, as a, as a gay guy coming out. They needed to take my storytelling and, and bring it to life. And from the outset, they've done that. They've, they've completely put 110% trust in, in me and they, they've been amazing. Do you think that a straight person can act that? Definitely, With, without a shadow of a doubt. And why shouldn't they be allowed to just because they're Exactly, you and, 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 and do you know what? It's changed my mindset completely as a director that you always, always give somebody the benefit of the doubt. Thank you so much. No, thank you, thank you. It's been a pleasure, thank you for coming. Okay, um, Ed's had to go because he's on stage. <laughs> and we were, we're stealing him out of rehearsal yeah. at the moment. Um, um, but Jake, yes. what have you taken away from this show um, that you're going to take with you on your career journey? You've got to do your research, 100%. If, if the character is played with integrity and sincerity and he or she knows exactly every single little detail about that character and about what that person is going through, then then you that's that's what creates a perfect performance for me i just wanted to represent everybody's story to the best of my ability and make sure that i told their story well and that i didn't cause any offense it's been a really amazing experience thank you jake thanks bye bye uh, so final thoughts just the all aced it the aced it i think one thing to kind of mention as well is that for ed like ed 17 jake's 19 mm -hmm. So they're both relatively young. But for him to do that show as a straight guy and to treat it with such like... Maturity. Maturity and sensitivity yeah. and sincerity and do it so well and be so respectful of it mm. and understand it, even though he, you know, he... They've not been through it. The directors really like lent themselves to his actors and his actors have really trusted him. Yeah. And it's they've reaped the reward. In the cast of five, there was not one that wasn't perfect. Yeah. That's what made me like really emotional is that the boys took such a um, incredibly important message yeah. about coming out at 15 years old and mm. falling in love. If you don't know the show, there's the scene, bedroom scenes and kissing scenes and really tactile scenes between um, Jake and Ed. And it wasn't, there was nothing farcical or like there was not, even knowing the boys as much as we do, there was nothing that was uncomfortable. Yeah. They were in it in the moment for the first time. It's like you were actually there in their room. Yeah, we really and believed it. Was it. Oh, it was beautiful. And for Michael as well, it must have been super special to have them um, really treat that with the most respect yeah. and um, really tell that story. Mm. Must have been a really kind of heartwarming thing for him. Mm. They are two straight guys they're never gonna yeah. have that experience i think that's what makes me like super super proud of the boys yeah is that so well done boys you really like threw us tonight didn't they yeah and let's open up that conversation yeah
should straight people be able to play gay people? Yeah, because obviously there's a big debate at the minute about Jack Whitehall playing the first major gay character in Disney. Mm Mm-hmm. And everyone's kicking off, and I don't really see why because it's called acting, people. <laughs> That's what we do. Obviously, it's acting, so they're not going to know, but they need to give themselves to that character and be be ready. You're just to... playing the truth of the character, not of yourself. Yeah. This is to wrap up the beautiful thing vlog. I can't thank everybody, but. You, you guys know who you are who've come and, and sort of took, taken time out of your day. Um, it really, really, really does mean a lot. It's been nice, especially with Ed being one of my best mates. Uh, it's, it's been really, really nice to sort of spend that, obviously, more time with him. But to sort of be playing a part on stage where, I'm going to be honest, I, I, I had, I've never played a part like that before. And I, I was scared of playing that part. I, was, I, didn't think, I didn't think as an actor I could do it. Um, but it's been it's been so so good having Ed alongside me because he's not made me feel awkward in any way. I don't feel I could have felt as natural and as comfortable with anybody else. Um, so yeah, it, it's been really really nice to to play opposite Ed. I want to say a massive massive thank you to Mike Mike Jones McCaw to be directed by him for a piece that is so close to his heart. Um, has been such such an amazing experience. It's been so nice to be able to have Mike there where any time there's a scene that I'm struggling with or I can just be like, how do I play this? How how would you how did you feel in that situation? How how would you react in that situation? We've all worked so hard and we put so much into it because we wanted to do it justice for everybody who has been through that experience, who is going for, through that experience. It's not just for the gay community, it's, it's for everybody else who's sort of experienced anything like that. It's not the end of the world. E- even if you think I'm going through something and, and you might think at the time, this is, this is life shattering for me, this is, this is my, my parents might not accept me, my friends, and it, it will always get better. And, and, and that's, that's the big thing. Right now, it might feel like this is the end of your world. But believe me, it's not. There's always some somewhere better to go. Anybody suffering with mental health or, or anything like that, I think what the play gets at most is it's the best thing to do is to talk to people. If you keep everything bottled up, it'll only end badly. So talk to people, talk to your friends, talk to your, your parents, your teachers, anybody that you feel comfortable talking to, just do it. Are we done yet?